Good evening from the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish along with Corey Sima as we talk about the approaching storms this evening. And I'll tell you what, Corey, uh, while there's uh, plenty of thunderstorm activity, there's quite a bit of lightning in the western skies right now. Uh, not a whole lot of severe recently, and that's good news. It hasn't been overly intense so far. That doesn't mean they couldn't become severe, and that may very well happen. But right now, um, relatively mooted, all things can consider. And especially considering earlier today, with uh, a lot of heavy showers and storms, Duval County generally avoiding the severe stuff, right. uh, but still getting in on some heavy rain and lightning and uh, tornado warning earlier today in St. Johns County from Putnam County in very similar areas that we had yesterday. You can just move the chair. That's all right. Out of the way there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say we were all on, we were on top of it. Uh, first alert weather day. Uh, we were talking about it yesterday and um, you know, we don't we don't want to see bad weather move in, but um, you know, it happened again and uh, we still have this line of yeah. rain to move through. And the initial initial rain and storms that occurred up the up and down the I-95 corridor to the coast earlier this afternoon may be what's helping us tonight. Uh, a little bit more stable, not quite as unstable as it might be otherwise. We've had some we have some rain cooled air in other words. But a tornado watch does still remain in effect uh, for virtually the entire area. The northwest edge has been pushed away here. Uh, cleaned uh, and cleared uh, Ware and Pierce County, uh, but the rest of the watch remains in effect. Remember, a watch means conditions are favorable for severe weather. A warning means you need to take action, and there are no warnings right now. There's the watch means severe weather is possible. Conditions are right. Warning, it's imminent. It's indicated by radar or has been reported by the public or storm spotters. So we don't have any warnings right now, but we do have the tornado watch. And we certainly have a long band of thunderstorms here. It's a squall line, but it, 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 the northern part is especially struggling. And that's because the air is cooler here north of Interstate 10. Um, there's plenty of atmospheric um, instability, plenty of energy, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, but it's just, um, it's not able to overcome the lack of heating here north of I-10 for the most part. Let's zoom in to, uh, Corey's going to zoom in here to Duval County because we do have a couple of little cells that have popped out ahead of the main line here uh, that we'll need to watch carefully. And there's a couple of new ones starting to go up just south of downtown. Uh, but a cell like this where it's all out there alone, Corey, those are the kind that, that we really play, pay close attention to on a night like this. That could quickly become severe. It isn't at the moment, but uh, that's one we'd watch out for. Whenever those little cells can kind of get on their own and get away from the main line, right. then they can they can kind of feed on the atmosphere by themselves and, and live and grow and unfortunately sometimes strengthen uh, into even stronger cells. So that's let's, what Mike is talking about with this one. Let's go ahead and track that one. And uh, it's th these are moving to the northeast at 35 miles per hour. These are uh, moving into the west side of Duval now. There's even a little bit of uh, pop up stuff here, Mike, over yeah, the river. Yeah, just south of downtown. Ortega, yeah. just south of downtown. So they'll uh, be pouring downtown in a few minutes here. So timing out just this little bit of it. Uh, I think a little more north. A little more north, including Fernandina Beach. There you go. And uh, there we go. So downtown in five minutes. Ocean Way, 839. Yulee, 855. St. Mary's, 908. And then Grayfield at 918. So we're talking southeast Georgia. Uh, after about 9 o'clock. And it's going to start raining before that. We're just we're timing out this little bit of the rain. More intense storms. The, the more intense part of the storm that's over Duval right now. So moving north, northeast, northeast at about 40, uh, 35 miles per hour, and you can see the lightning popping up. So there's plenty of lightning here. You'll hear a thunder. You'll be able to see that lightning. In fact, let's pop in Riverside real quick here, um, Corey, Skycam Network, and we, we've been seeing some lightning. It's not constant like you see sometimes with storms, but there's been some out there. This is Riverside First Alert Skycam Network. This is live right now. This is Interstate 10 right here. This is I-95, so this is the I-95, I-10 interchange. So we're looking west, southwest. The river would be just a little bit over here off the left side. And then there's, there's some lightning. So there we go. that's what we've been seeing. We've been seeing occasional <laughs> lightning. It's not overly frequent, um, but it's, it's, it's there. And you'll hear thunder with this, too, as it moves in and some heavy rain. Let's put the, we haven't looked at the velocities yet. Let's take a look at the velocities on First Alert Doppler HD. And we're seeing generally 30 to 40 mile an hour winds for the most part. Um, but in that cell moving through, um, into Bradford and Union County is especially intense, and we'll get on that in a minute. And notice the cells south of Jacksonville, how quickly they've moved northward, and they've intensified a little bit 
just since we started this Facebook Live, which again, if you're just tuning in, it's just a Facebook Live to get you updated on the weather and this line of storms moving in. We have a question from Grace. Okay. Actually, I hope Grace is still watching. This was four minutes ago. When are we getting some snow? <laughs> No, no snow. Uh, that's an easy one. That's probably the easiest question we're going to get tonight. None, uh, which is good. The rest of the country is suffering, folks. Uh, well, we stay at least relatively warm, although very wet. In fact, we've got those stats, uh, too, which we'll show you tonight. But today's the seventh day in a row with rain, and in many cases, it has been inches of rain. Parts of Clay and St. John's County have had more than a half foot of rain since last Friday, uh, so a week ago Friday. So it's pretty been suddenly a wet pattern. 11 of the 15 days of this month have been wet. So, and that's pretty unusual for this time of year. And we were very dry going into this week, last 10 days or so, uh, getting more concerned about the wildfire danger, pollen counts up, pine pollen's out, but the wet weather helps all that. So that's some good news. So here comes the storm snow through Western Duval, the lightning and the heavy rain extends northward. Let's track this Nassau County cell. This extends, yeah. Moving yeah, Mike, through St. George, it's Bryceville, moving Callahan. Right up toward Callahan and Hilliard. And then it'll cross the Georgia border. So uh, Corey's going to track this one as it heads to the northeast and include the northwest beltway there of 295 and into Hilliard in six minutes. Kingsland at 858. It'll be into Woodbine, Georgia at 907. Cabin Bluff, that's a beautiful camping area, by the way, at 919. And Brunswick at 941. You would expect some gusty winds. And we had the velocities on there a minute ago and didn't see anything too impressive. So 30 to 35 mile an hour winds locally stronger, but they could suddenly become severe at any time with damaging winds or even an isolated tornado. We are not indicating that kind of thing right now. Now these are pretty intense storms. Uh, more, some of the more intense ones that we have now in our area. Moving into Bradford and Union County, Lake Butler getting hit real hard. So let's time the, and there are a couple little individual cells out ahead of it along Highway 301 that bear watching. They have some lightning. Let's track both of those, Corey. Yeah, there's the first line that Corey's tracking and the initial cells out ahead of along Highway 301 into McClenny in eight minutes, Baldwin at 840, Bryceville at 851, Dinsmore at 902, and St. George at 905. St. George is already getting rain from the cells up here. Remember, that's timing this belt of storms. You're also getting storms already in many of these communities, which also means you're going to get a lot of rain out of this because we're seeing storms move up across the same area a couple of times before they move out. So you may get a quick inch, inch and a half of rain today just out of this band of storms, not including what had already occurred this afternoon, Corey. And a couple of folks are asking specifically about St. Okay. Augustine, okay. which is notable because it's going to be a little bit later right. uh, for those of you in St. Augustine. We're getting the rain in Duval County now. But the rain that's going to move over St. Augustine is like still way, way down yeah. here over Cedar Key and in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, you're still, what, an hour or two? Oh, a solid hour, I would say. Um, yeah. away Let's go from ahead and track it. Getting the rain, those of you in St. Augustine. Um, you just realize it's a southwest, northeast oriented line. And so Corey's point is that it's, it's, it's oriented away from St. Augustine. So these, you're going to have to wait for these cells down here. That was Alicia and Roberta asking okay. about it All in right. the Good comments. Good questions. And it, so it's going to take a while to get across I-75 in Gainesville to get into St. Augustine, uh, but it'll get there. Uh, you just have a little more time than, than your neighbors to the north and west. Uh, yeah, maybe even between two and three hours there. Yeah, estimated. I, I needed to go farther south on see. that. Yeah, I think um, that 10-15 in Nocatee sounds a little late to me, too. Um, yeah, there you go. I think you got to get into that part of the line and take it. Uh, yeah, there you go. You'll catch it now. And so that's into St. Augustine at 11.42. And that sounds late to me, too. What is it running at? Is uh, that this, at 35? This is 35. Okay. Well, the individual cells are moving quickly to the north-northeast while the entire line slides east. And I would say we're, we're probably looking at a little earlier than that. Um, I think maybe 45 is maybe more representative. Maybe that's, that's what we need to do. Uh, Corey on our speeds for forward movement on the storms. Uh, but the lightning is, is certainly frequent here in Bradford County. That's a pretty good cell now in Bradford County, uh, Corey. Uh, zooming in there, you see all the lightning, a cluster of lightning is just Over Lake Butler. hammering Lake Butler. Yeah, really uh, intense there. And then that, that activity will move up into Duval County. Now, it may not be as intense by the time it gets here, but we'll see. Again, there are no warnings in effect. Uh, we have the tornado watch, but there are no warnings in effect. The cell west of Jacksonville has continued to um, look pretty heavy in its own right, um, and it should be raining downtown or just got finished raining downtown. Got a, got a question from Warren. Okay, Lauren. Uh, Warren, thanks for watching. Is the shear from earlier today that helped with the supercells still at play with this line? Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's a good question. So it's a little bit different setup this evening versus this afternoon. Um, was it Lauren? Is that what you said it was? Warren. 
Warren. Warren. With okay. W. Warren. Uh, it was. Um, and these are Corey's gone way back to when we had these isolated, and they were, if not true supercells, they were supercell like. And I, I would say one of them was. Yeah, I would say by our standards, they were certainly in Northeast Florida, they were supercells, especially this one. Uh, this is the one that started out in Putnam County, and actually we had a hook echo on it all the way out over the Atlantic. Uh, when at that point it would have been a water spot if it was producing. But you, you, so the atmosphere in this case this afternoon, the shear was a little bit more. The directional shear was a little more prevalent and a little stronger, but especially directional shear. By that I mean the winds at the coast and to about I-95 are blowing out of the southeast. Then they become southwest as they get higher into the atmosphere. And then they become even a little bit west southwest. And that is shear that helps storms rotate and can produce the large hail and the isolated tornado warnings that we had. Now, with the squall line coming in, the shear is a little less, it's what we call unidirectional, less directional shear. So unidirectional, it's a little more uniform throughout the atmosphere. It doesn't mean you cannot get a tornado, it's just not quite as easy as with those isolated cells that we had this afternoon. And that's why we look carefully at these little cells that are out ahead of the main line. Those are the ones that are a little bit better chance of tapping a little more unstable air, having a, maybe a little bit more directional shear and a little bit higher risk of, of producing a tornado versus the squall line, which is more of a high wind setup. Although if you get little notches within the squall line, which can happen and could evolve into that tonight, it hasn't yet, uh, then you can get a higher tornado risk. But Question from Tyler here. Okay, Tyler. Sorry to interrupt you, nope, Mike. No problem. When will all the rain be over? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good it's, question. It's like it's raining every day in Ocean Way, blah. Yeah, well, and it has. Seven straight yes. days. Uh, and <laughs> 11 out of the last 15. And in, in Ocean Way is kind of close to the International Airport. Right, That's right. where we get the official number. Right. But like some spots, it's been raining more than right. seven days in a row. Well, the pattern so. remains very active and wet through this week. So you get some breaks at least. Tomorrow's a pretty nice day. The front will be through here well before rush hour tomorrow morning. So it'll be drying out. It will be cooler but nice tomorrow. And we'll break out into sunshine. We may have a little bit of a post-frontal inversion for a while in the morning that keeps our low clouds around early on. But that should pretty quickly be scoured out with dry air coming in from the north and west. So tomorrow's a nice day. But I'll tell you what, that front doesn't go very far. It turns into a warm front. It's coming through as a cold front tonight, producing a squall line. But then it turns around as a warm front and comes back to the north, which has happened multiple times the last two weeks. That's why it's been so wet and stormy. So as it comes back on Wednesday, we get back into rain. It doesn't look like a lot, but at least some rain on Wednesday. And then Thursday, the next strong cold front moves in. And while much of the day may be quite dry, it will be windy and warm again and unstable. And it looks like more storms late in the day, Thursday and Thursday night, that could be severe. The good news is that is a much stronger front, and it's kind of the last in a series of storms as the jet stream kind of reorients itself in the atmosphere. It actually takes, goes into kind of a resting phase. And so the weekend looks really nice right now. Much cooler, but really nice. And I warned you a couple weeks ago, we're not done with frost. And some places will have frost Saturday morning. So it's going to turn colder, but it'll be nice and at least dry this weekend. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's just and that you have to wait uh, till Friday. Four weekends, the last yeah, four weekends point have had at least one day of rain. So this coming weekend is going to be the first one, at least from end to end, that it's going completely to be dry. dry. Yeah. Completely dry. So we've got dry. that going for us. So that's some good news. And we, I mentioned the severe winter weather and, and how that's been impacting the rest of the country. Let's take a look at that advisory map that you built earlier today, Corey, because we're literally set up on that battleground, the boundary, that front between the wintry weather to the north and west and, then, and our warm weather to the south and east. So the front's hanging out nearby. It's a classic setup for us to get wet and stormy, and that's the way it's been. Look at all of the winter weather advisories. And that this are in is effect. much less than what yeah. it was. Yeah, there was a lot Just more yesterday. over the weekend. Yeah. But these are winter storm warnings from deep into Texas where they are having massive power outages. It extends northeast up the Tennessee and Ohio valleys with heavy snow in some places up to a foot. And then all the way up into northern New England, although a lot of this will miss kind of the east coast and the southeastern part of the country, obviously for us. So the answer to the, one of the early questions in our Facebook Live is, it, when's it going to snow? The answer <laughs> is just simply no, at least not right now, not in this pattern, not anytime soon. Uh, if you want to see snow, and somebody sent me an email about that, even the Appalachians really aren't being impacted until you get quite a ways north and west, as you can see on this map. Uh, but boy, where it is winter, it is a lot of ice and snow. And this is setting up that battleground very nearby. That's very stable, unfortunately. 
uh, meaning it's wet because the front is not going very far. But this is showing signs of breaking down by the weekend. We'll turn a lot cooler, but also a lot drier. And then um, it looks like a more typical winter weather pattern after this week where you get storms, but they're not just lined up one after the other. And the bitter cold in the Midwest will finally start to uh, abate this weekend. In fact, that'd be another interesting map. Do you have the national map? I've got it in in there somewhere, Corey. If you just type it in, you'll find it. Uh, but the national map of temperatures is just silly. Um, 66 here in Jacksonville with, of course, a lot of humidity. There's the big dip in the jet stream. Look at New Orleans at 29. 29. I didn't see that today yet. So New Orleans is at 29. It's 10 in Dallas. That is remarkably unusual. Dallas wow. usually gets some snow each winter. It's not at all uncommon. Not a lot, typically, but they'll usually get some. And they'll get into the 20s and sometimes the teens. But that's that's the the temperature hasn't been much above 10 all day in Dallas. That's just cold. And all the way down to South Te Brownsville has been down in the uh, 30s today. And it didn't get above zero from Kansas City to the U.S.-Canadian border. Cool. Iowa has been below zero four days in a row, most of Iowa, four days in a row without getting above zero. That's just brutal. I have family in Iowa. I grew up in Iowa. Um, the winters are tough. They're long. This is ridiculous. My family's in Oklahoma. It's yeah. not nearly as cold as Iowa, but my parents are like, yeah, it was zero degrees today. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, we may make the 70s. Yeah. So. It's just a bitterly cold air mass. But this dip in the jet stream, that's, that's, you can see how it, it, it turns up to the north and east here, and that's what's saving us but it keeps the cold front nearby and the fronts and that's why it's so wet and stormy and again this kind of starts to to settle down over the next five or six days by the weekend into early next week and we'll go back to a more alicia has another pattern. question okay this alicia. is kind of important will the tornado watch be extended it doesn't appear as though it will i i thought at first it might have to be extended an hour or so or maybe even two hours when it was issued this afternoon but given the progress right now uh, I would think uh, 10 o'clock is going to do it. You know, maybe St. John's and Clay and Putnam County could be in the storms a little longer. But um, I would not expect that really to be extended much, especially considering we haven't really seen much severe recently, which is good news. Also, and I mean, you kind of hit on this, but we're running out of space. Like the storms, the storms yeah. are moving into Duval County now. And so there's just that limited window that we have. It's mainly the leading edge of the rain and storms that that could pose a severe a potential. Severe potential. Right. Um, right. And so we're just kind of running out of real estate. Now, yeah. spots farther south of I-10, like St. Augustine, uh, Palatka, uh, Flagler County, not technically in our viewing area, but the, it, that uh, spots down there may see a prolonged threat. But uh, 10 p.m., probably covering it well. Yeah, pretty well. Uh, there may be some strong storms, as Corey mentioned, to the south of Jacksonville yet, but that'll, it won't go beyond midnight, the storm threat, and is pretty much done by 10 to 11 o'clock or so tonight. So that's some good news. You can sleep well, and I can get home, and Corey can get home. Corey's had a very long day, long weekend, uh, so with a lot of storms. So, um, so it will calm down nicely before midnight, the way it looks. Let's go ahead and let's put the wind on this, Corey, and see if we see anything that stands out. Storms are moving into Brunswick now, crossing I-95 in Nassau County into western Duval County. Again, we have kind of a rogue cell out there. Just uh, looks like some, some high wind. A gusty winds. Gusty but not winds. anything crazy. No. Uh, there's not anything crazy. Lake Butler, that looks like maybe an enhanced area there. Uh, another area there will move up into Stark, north of Gainesville. Those are a couple spots here where you see a little bit of brighter color embedded in that green where we might have maybe pushing 50 mile an hour winds. Yeah, heads up I, or south of I-10 especially. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe even as far south as uh, south of State Road 16. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the, the best opportunity for some of those higher winds or maybe a, a little quick spin up tornado. Um, the threat looks uh, almost non-zero for southeast Georgia. Right. Uh, pretty low for Jacksonville. We still got to watch it. You know, the tornado watch still in effect. And these, but, yeah, it's the kind of thing where they, something could quickly try to go severe. Yeah. But it, it looks fairly, uh, relatively benign. Although it's going to get loud over the next hour. If, if you're already in this, you know that you're going to have lightning, thunder, heavy rain, gusty winds. But we're not seeing anything exceptional or real unusual. Got to watch this cell in western Duval now. Headed toward the uh, 295 I-10 uh, interchange there. And that's oh. the second one since we've been on it here. It is the second so one. So these yeah. are moving fast. Yeah. Uh, so that one's going to roll across the Northwest Beltway at 295. Dinsmore, for example, will be included uh, in that storm. And there is an attempt here. It looks like this is trying to bow a little as it comes out of uh, Union County into Bradford County, southeastern Baker County. 
uh, accompanied by a good deal of lightning. That, that, that's trying, but as I said, when we looked at the uh, wind on it, it wasn't all that significant. Um, but it is, trying to, it is trying to bow a little bit, which sometimes can be a precursor to uh, a lot of wind. Just had a big lightning flash over JIA, so let's, okay. uh, let's hang out here for a sec. All right. That, this, you see it's raining here. The first shower that, or storm on the west side of Duval County when we first started on here, uh, is that probably 10 minutes ago now? At least, yeah. Um, it was over western Duval. Now it's moving over the airport. There's another shower in that same spot over I-10. There's a little lightning. Um, just right before I switched it, I was looking off to the side, and we have a, we have a panel of uh, four sky cams that we can uh, basically just pick and put up so we can look at them at any time. And there's oh, another there's one. another one. Uh, just a very bright flash uh, right when I looked over there. Uh, sometimes you got to get lucky when it comes to TV. Sometimes Mother Nature just is like, nope. Yeah, so uh, not right now. So, but looks it's, like it's, so it's not real frequent lightning, but we're getting some lightning, and you'll have some thunder and the gusty winds and the heavy rain. So let's just do a recap, uh, get, uh, Corey. Unless you've got some other, we want to grab a few questions there. Um, I can hop back into the comments. Um, still got about 280 people watching us here. Um, Rodrigo is asking about Mandarin. They're going to be severe weather or gusty winds or bad lightning. Um, I'd say the potential is there for all of that. The threat is looking a little less and less specifically for Mandarin. You are going to get some gusty winds, Rodrigo, um, and a little bit of lightning. Looks Probably like in about a half hour or so. With, yeah, I'd, and I'd say in, in about 30 minutes. Um, so spots south of Duval County and south of Mandarin, the conditions will be a little more intense. But... Um, and William, William just said heavy rain now, just north of JIA. So we were just okay, looking right. there at the that's international the storm airport. that's moving up through northern Duval, kind of out ahead, was out ahead of the line, kind of merged with the line now. Um, and uh, Lisa in Brunswick, uh, Lisa saying round three for storms in Brunswick. Yeah. Um, says uh, last exit before Darien. So. Um, so that's right, just north of Brunswick. Yeah. And um, heavy rain and lightning, that's right here. So you can see it on first alert Doppler HD. That's a pretty decent line of storms. And once the main line comes through, then you have a period of a half hour to an hour of moderate to at times heavy rain. And then there's a few cells behind it. But the severe threat is with the initial line hitting. And once that hits, your severe threat, if it doesn't occur, it's over. Oh, the severe threat. So that's the good news. You'll have lingering heavy rain, but the severe threat's going to be, if there's going to be a severe threat, is on the leading edge of the line. Let's just go ahead and, and track the Duval cell that's going through downtown and in the west and southwest part of that line, Corey, and call it a Facebook Live today. You can see the western beltway getting into that heavy cell now. This is moving into areas that it's already raining. Again, it's already raining in these spots, but another surge of heavier downpours downtown in five minutes. Oceanway again, 856, Yulee at 909, St. Mary's at 919, Cabin Bluff at 931. And then we'll go down to the area from McClenny to Lake Butler and Stark and time this as it heads east and northeast. That cell in western Duval has got quite a bit of lightning, so we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, the main line of storms here, this will move uh, quickly. We're going to pull it all the way up here. All right, quickly to the northeast into Baldwin at 859, where it is, again, already raining, but this is the next line. Middleburg at 9 o'clock straight up, downtown again at 929, Yulee at 949, St. Mary's at 955. And Jackie just commenting in, lightning, thunder, downpours in St. Mary's. Okay, so well, there we go. And that's more to come. Yeah, you'll, this is St. Mary's at 955 is this next line. You've already got the heavy rain, as you mentioned. And let's go ahead and, and time it further south, Corey, with the line that's now moving through Gainesville. Pretty intense line. Um, that's the most intense storm right there, yeah, uh, would, just yeah. east of that Cedar Key. I'm actually a little surprised they don't have a warning on that one south of Gainesville. But um, that'll be up into Waldo at 850, Maxwell at 923, Middleburg at 933, and Bryceville at about 939. So Palakka to St. Augustine, you'll be the last ones in on this line of storms, and it looks to be about, probably about 10, give or take, because uh, these are moving right along. I think it'll be pretty quick uh, into, Saint, relatively speaking, for Palakka and St. Augustine. And yeah, that's a pretty intense cell there south of Gainesville. Yeah. Uh, rolling uh, individual cells moving northeast at about 30 to 40 miles per hour while the whole line gradually shifts toward the east. So in a recap here, uh, 
again, we're looking at a line of storms moving through. A tornado watch is in effect. There are no warnings, however. Watch means conditions are favorable. Warning means you've got severe weather imminent. Don't have anything like that right now. We will break into programming on CBS 47 and Fox 30 Action News, Jax, if warnings are issued. Uh, and you'll get uh, an alert on your um, electronic device if you download for free the First Alert Weather app. Uh, very handy. You'll get that warning immediately. We, we'll be, Corey and I are pushing out alerts as these storms develop and move in. And this is, the severe threat is through about 10, 1030, and then that'll be it. There'll still be some rain left behind, perhaps even a little bit of lightning and thunder. Uh, but the severe threat is with the, right at the beginning of the line. So once that hits, you're, and it moves through, you're in good shape. And then finally, we get into some clearing as we go through the day tomorrow and some sunshine and a break before more rain moves in Wednesday and storms late Thursday and Thursday night. But that's what that one last strong cold front that should finally scour things out for a while. So. For Corey Sima, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. Corey, thanks for joining me on this Facebook Live and for all your hard work over the last few days with severe weather. Have a good night. Severe weather each thanks day since watching. what, Friday? Uh, yeah, since Friday. We've had severe weather so um, and, and several episodes before that. So uh, stay calm, stay safe. We're here in the First Alert Weather Center to update you around the clock as needed. But again, right now, we don't have any warnings that are in effect, but expect some gusty winds and certainly very heavy rain and some flashes of lightning over the next hour or two. Have a great night.